Hi everyone, in this video we'll be doing a distro review of Open Media Vault. The Open Media Vault is an ideal distro for creating a network attached storage device, or a NAS. So it's based on Debian Squeeze, it comes with quite a few features for setting up RAID arrays and folder shares so you can access the system from Linux, Windows or Mac. It comes with a few other features here as well, so you've got a BitTorrent client you can enable, uh, you can enable in an interface with a UPS device. So we're going to take a look at it. Now this is on a full system install. It's actually the new computer I was putting together last month. So this is the web interface on it. On the system itself it's very basic. It's only like a headless server. So once you've got the distro on there, you can unplug the keyboard and monitor and then do any work on the device from the web GUI or an SSH terminal interface. So what we've got, we've got some general settings about the device, but we'll go straight on and look at the storage. This is probably the more interesting aspect of it. So a couple of physical drives that I've got in the machine. So the first one's got all my data on, and the second one is actually the operating system, and I'm running it off a USB memory stick, which is a 16 gig USB 3 memory stick. You've got the option here of setting up a RAID, so it's quite simple, you can create, choose which type of RAID that you want, put a number of devices in, and you can even grow and recover it. I've only got one hard drive in there at the moment, but uh, I think within the next couple of months I'll boost the numbers. That's just a quick view there of the hard drive that I'm using. So you can see I've got 600 gig on, in use on there and still got about 2 terabytes left. Then we've got the access write management. So you can set up user accounts. So you can set up the groups they belong to, or if you're going to allow them to have a terminal interface. You've got the types of groups the users can belong to, and this part comes pre-set up within the system. Got some shared folders that I've set up, and you can go and configure the privileges, so which user has access to what. Probably more useful than this one actually, because this one I'm using as an FTP access. You've got different types of services that you can enable on the device, so you can have NFS, uh, TFTP, FTP, uh, Samba or SMB, that's used for Windows shares. So you can set up the work group, or whether you allow users to have null passwords, so i.e. no passwords at all for access. That's the shares that I've enabled over SMB. We've also got R Sync or Remote Sync. I've not gotten into that one really. It's probably going to struggle to use that on my network because it's uh, the sheer amount of data that I've got and the limited network speed. I'm not sure what this one is, SNMP. But the last one, SSH, that allows you a remote access via the terminal. So for instance, i just opened up a terminal screen there and type in ssh root at nas.local. There is, there's a command prompt access into Open Media Vault. I'll just type in uptime there just to show it does something. You can have a look at what processes are running. But here's a pretty Gucci bit the system information. Click on the system. And it shows you some nice pretty graphs of like memory usage, load average, CPU usage, the network traffic and disk usage. You can also view the system logs and you can view the more specific ones so like authentication, daemon, FTP and a few others there. And just a last quick look at the general settings. So you've got you can set up the time network, what interface you're going to use, IP addresses, DNS, and you can even set up the firewall. Enable any notifications, power management, uh, that's SSL certificates. You can even do the update manager, so I can install updates from here. So I just tick that and then tick install. And to enhance the system, you can install some plugins. So you've got a transmission BitTorrent, a network UPS tools, Apple Protocol plugin, Logical Volume Manager. 
don't know what that one is, ICSI Enterprise Target Plugin Adapt Server, I'm not sure what that is either. So that's the web GUI of Open Media Vault. Now with it being a Linux system, you can go over and above what you can with a pre-built NAS that you could buy in a shop. So I can install some extra programs on here. So I've got my SAB NZBD downloader. And I've set up Sickbeard for, for doing like a PVR box of my favorite TV programs. So this will automatically download any new programs when they're released. And I can see how many that I've got so far out of, out of all the series. So yeah, that's some of what you can do with Open Media Vault. Right, so here's what I thought of Open Media Vault. So yeah, it is quite easy to use. You've got a nice simple web interface to enable and disable services. Ease of installation. Well, it only comes with a text-based installer. So it does require a bit of reading on the screen and perhaps not as simple as some of the GUI installers that you get with like Ubuntu. The styling, you know, it's pretty good really for the web interface. Customizations, there's some limitations in the setting up on folder shares. All right, the boot up speed, do you know, it's pretty damn quick. Number of bugs, didn't really find any. Selection of pre-installed apps, uh, that's pretty good for all it is really, there's only a few on there and that's about all you need. Number of apps available, well, perhaps limited more by the age of Debian Squeeze, but then on the other hand the programs that you can get are very well, very stable and well tested. And it comes with the 32 and 64 bit versions, so overall the good points, well it's lightweight enough to be run from a USB memory stick. And it's very easy to set up and ideal for the less advanced Linux or Windows users. The bad points though, it's difficult to turn off some of the unneeded services, which leaves quite a few ports being left open. It's a bit of a security risk if you're going to want to run it when you're connected to the internet, so for remote access, so like on the FTP shares, it's perhaps a bit of a security risk that I've got some of these other ports left open. Not really a problem if you're going to use it on your internal network. And the older kernel in Debian Squeeze could cause some compatibility issues with brand new hardware. Uh, not a problem really if you're going to use anything that's over a year old for the hardware. So overall, 80%. That's still a pretty good distro ideal for setting up a network attached storage device or a NAS. So thanks for watching. See you later.